Hello everyone, in this session we will discuss SQL Server replication types. There are several replication types including snapshot, transactional, merge replication, peer-to-peer, -peer, bidirectional and updatable subscriptions. Snapshot replication is used to move entire article from one database to another at a regular interval. The article is a snapshot from point in time. This is not incremental data. For example, you have articles to replicate. If you create snapshot replication with push subscription, two agents are created in distributor server, snapshot agent and distribution agent. Snapshot agent takes shared log on this article in the publisher and generate snapshot files for this article. These snapshot files are then placed in snapshot folder in distributor. Then logs are released from publication article. Okay? Also, it records MS REPL commands and MS REPL transactions to distribution database. These are metadata about snapshot files. After that, distribution agent checks this MS REPL commands and MS REPL transactions at runtime from distribution database and identifies a new snapshot and its location in snapshot folder. Based on this information, then it applies this new snapshot article to subscription database. Every time you run snapshot replication, this whole process is repeated for the whole article. This can be a heavy process, right? You are not moving all the incremental data, but you are moving the whole data by using snapshot every time. So when this snapshot replication is used and why we need this? We use snapshot replication when initial seeding in any type of replication. Also, in the cases where data changes infrequently, snapshot agent is used when on-time synchronization is also not needed. I mean, lagging inconsistency is acceptable. For example, your data changes once in a year. In this case, you don't need to consistently monitor incremental changes in the data, right? You just need to run snapshot replication at that point period, and that's all. But in case you don't want the whole data to be replicated, but only incremental data, you should use transactional replication. Transactional replication places initial snapshot of the data to subscriber, and if any data change occurs in the publisher, this incremental change only is delivered to subscriber. Let's see this in detail. When you create transaction replication in the initial stage, snapshot of the article is generated and it is placed in the subscriber. These steps are the same as snapshot replication, which I already talked, right? After this initial seeding, suppose there has been a change in the replication article and this change has been recorded in the transaction log. Then, log reader agent in the distributor checks this log and identifies the change. This log reader agent is created when you create transaction replication. Log reader agent uses stored procedure called SP REPL commands to get set of commands marked for replication from the transaction log. Then, it copies these change commands to distribution database and commits. After this commitment, log reader calls REPL done against the transaction log to mark the completed replication. Transaction commands are stored in the distribution database until they are propagated to all subscribers or until the maximum distribution retention period has been reached. Subscribers receive transactions in the same order in which they were applied in, at the publisher. I mean, they are consistent. Log reader agent can run constantly and check transaction logs, or you can set a schedule to run. Then distribution agent moves these commands to subscriber. If this would be pull subscription, distribution agent would be located in subscriber and pull commands from here. This is called standard tra transaction replication. There is also transaction replication with updatable subscriptions. The difference here is it is possible to update the rows as a subscriber. There are two types of updatable subscribers, immediate updating and queued updating. With immediate updating, any change in the subscriber is immediately propagated in the publisher. With queued updating, the change is firstly put in the queue and asynchronously propagated to the publisher. 
This is very much useful when publisher is not sometimes available. Overall, how this works is when there is a change in the subscriber, this change is copied to distribution database and QReader agent applies this change to the publisher. That's all. There is bidirectional transactional replication. In this case, each server publishes data and then subscribes to a publication with the same article from the other server. If there is a change in first node, it is replicated through first channel. If there is a change in the second node, it is replicated through the second channel. Pretty much straightforward, right? There is also another a little slightly different structure, which we call peer-to-peer -peer transaction replication. In this case, each server is a distributor publisher. Therefore, each server can publish data to more than one subscriber. That's all. You can also merge data between subscriber and publisher with merge replication. For example, you have six row data being replicated. Imagine you delete a third row in publisher and six row in pub uh, subscriber. This change is saved to change tracking table in each server. To track any change and record in change tracking table, triggers are used. Then merge ag agent checks this tracking table at specific runtime and compares it with historical data in distribution database, then applies or merges that change. In this way, merge replication is done. Now you are aware of each replication. Let's try to create one of them in the next sessions.